So with regard to companies taking bets against mortgages during the height of the mortgage crisis, I guess there are a number of issues here which we need to unpackage and, and get really clear on. So let's say you made a bunch of mortgages at some point, you, you know, so you, so you, uh, you know, you basically lent people money and, um, and now five years later, you've come to the conclusion that these mortgages are bad, that these people are probably never going to pay you back. It makes complete and utter sense for you to go out into the market and hedge. And if the rest of the market doesn't realize that uh, there's a real mortgage problem, you can probably find a hedge to this. You can short, in a sense, in a sense, short sell them. In my view, as long as you're not lying to anybody, as long as you're not presenting these mortgages as something that they are not, as long as uh, you're not committing fraud. Well, these are completely legitimate transactions. It's a way for you to hedge a risk that you're not familiar with. But I think the, 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 the issue uh, that's more relevant here is, is uh, what the Justice Department went after Goldman Sachs for doing. And here the idea was that what Goldman did is they, they bought a bunch of mortgages, right, from banks, and then they repackaged these mortgages into CDOs. They, they created these tranches and they repackaged them. And then they sold those mortgages to a party. And then they said, in a sense, we're going to short these mortgages because we think they're no good, but you just sold them to these guys. Why are you shorting them? Or what, what they were actually accused of doing is they sold them to one party and they, sold it and they provided a short, right, a bet that these mortgages would fail to somebody else. So they took the same package and one party got the upside and another party got the downside. None of this is unusual, right? So uh, the idea that you as an investment bank are in, an intermediary here and you're packaging these mortgages and as long as you're not lying to either party about the quality of these mortgages, you're basically saying, here they are, here's the expected cash flow, here are the risks, do your own due diligence, estimate their value, and you know, let's see if we can cut a deal both on the long side and on the short side then there's no fraud here. You're not, you're not cheating anybody. And it's obvious to a party in a transaction that, look, for every buyer, there is a seller. So when you go into the stock market and you buy a stock uh, for 50 bucks, that's because you believe the stock is worth, let's say, 55, right? You want some upside. But the funny thing is the guy who sold it to you probably thinks the stock is worth 45 and he's taking some profit because he doesn't want it to go down to 45, so he's selling it at 50. So the whole way in which markets work is because people have deferring opinions about the value of a particular asset. And here, these repackaged mortgages, some people thought they were had X value, other people they thought they had a much lower value, therefore some people went long and some people went short. Some people bought, some people sold. That's what happens every single day in financial markets. That's exactly every transaction any broker is involved in. Now again, if Goldman Sachs or any of these investment bankers lied, if they had information that they were obliged to disclose and they didn't disclose it, then they committed fraud. We have laws on the book for that and they should be prosecuted for that. But I have not seen every, any evidence that that is the case. Indeed, uh, you know, even within a, a company like Goldman Sachs, you might have a group that what they do is they package these things and they find buyers for them and they provide them with full information and the buyers buy them. You might have a group that's involved with hedging some of Goldman Sachs's risks that might be shorting that same package or they might have another group that's actually speculating. They're investing Goldman's own money and they might have come to the conclusion mortgage is generally overvalued and it's an opportunity for us to short this package. So the, the, uh, the fact that you have different people with different points of view, with different opinions about the value of something, yeah, ex post, it's easy to go say, well, we should have, everybody should have known these things were overvalued. But the fact is that the people who bought this stuff were not, you know, if they had sold this to grandpa and grandma, middle class, no financial sophistication, and they somehow crammed it down their throat, then maybe you can make an argument that they were exploiting somebody here. But no, these things were sold to sophisticated investors, uh, wealthy investors, pension plans, insurance companies, and often they were sold to investment houses that were speculating, just like everybody else was speculating. 
And uh, they lost on the deal. You know, they speculated wrong, as sometimes happened, and they lost money. Uh, but the job of Goldman Sachs is to find buyers and sellers. And sometimes they are the buyer or the seller. 